The Incredible Hulk, 1977. The Incredible Hulk was the comic label's first huge splash in live-action entertainment, long before the words Marvel's cinematic universe were ever uttered. The popular television show aired from 1977 to 1982 and resulted in a number of TV movie sequels, which have been rerun for decades. Renowned bodybuilder Lou Ferrigno was chosen to reprise the role of the iconic Marvel character due to his physique. Since there was no CGI back in the days, so the first ever Hulk we got was a naked Ferrigno painted entirely green. Originally, Richard Keel was cast as the Hulk. However, as production on the pilot began, the producers believed he wasn't bulky enough. The Incredible Hulk Returns, 1988. The muscle-bound monster returned to television screens in 1988 in the form of a TV movie in which he teams up with Thor. You will be shocked to learn that in this movie and its sequels, Lou Ferrigno dons a new hairdo as the Hulk because his hearing troubles worsened, necessitating the replacement of his wig in order to better conceal his new hearing aid. But he did look much bigger in this TV movie and had been lifting some heavy iron in order to prepare for it. Additionally, this television film acted as a pilot for a planned Thor television series, but that project never got off the ground. The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, 1989. The success of the previous film saw him return to the TV screens next year in yet another made-for-television movie, this time joining hands with Daredevil in order to defeat the infamous Wilson Fisk. This movie was the first instance of Stan Lee, the father of Marvel Comics, making a cameo in the movie. He then went on to do 36 more cameos in future Marvel projects. Like the film that preceded it, this film was also conceived as a backdoor pilot for a potential NBC Daredevil series, but just like the previous film, that Daredevil series never happened. The Death of the Incredible Hulk, 1990. This movie marked the end of the Incredible Hulk revival TV movie trilogy that ran for more than a decade. Iron Man was originally scheduled for use in the film, but the idea was eventually scratched. While Bill Bixby's terminal illness was stated as a reason for the postponement and eventual cancellation of a sequel film, this was not the case. The decision was made before Bixby's health became an issue, and it was based on the film series' declining ratings. Following the ratings failure of this movie, NBC chose not to continue the series, and that marked the end of Hulk in the 20th century. Hulk 2003 After a hiatus of more than a decade, the raging green monster saw its first major reboot when it hit the big screens again in 2003. Even though Edward Norton played the Hulk in 2008, he was approached to play the role in the 2003 version as well, but turned it down. So, the producers went with Eric Bana. This may have come as a shock to many fans. Unfortunately for Bana, the movie was a critical and commercial disaster, and with a 69.7% loss in second weekend box office, it holds the record for the biggest second weekend box office drop for a film that debuted at number one. The Incredible Hulk, 2008. Just when everyone thought the 2003 disaster was rock bottom for the Hulk franchise, director Louis Leterrier proved everyone wrong by coming up with an even worse rendition in his 2008 sequel come reboot. The post credit screen incorporating Tony Stark in the Hulk story was a nice touch and a fun moment for fans. But with the MCU's new direction, almost everything Stark says in that scene makes no sense. The implication in this scene is that the Hulk was slated to be the villain in the upcoming Avengers team-up film. Whoever at Marvel Studios prevented that abomination from happening deserves a pay raise.
The Avengers, 2012. 2012 saw the Marvel Cinematic Universe finally getting it right when they assembled all their superheroes into a single movie, The Avengers. This was also when we got to see Mark Ruffalo's amazing performance as the Hulk that we now know and love, giving us iconic scenes like the one where Loki got a beating from him. The movie was a resounding success and at the time became the highest grossing film of all time not directed by James Cameron. Originally, Edward Norton was intended to reprise his role as Hulk from The Incredible Hulk 2008, but talks between him and Marvel Studios fell through and Ruffalo was cast instead. And I will not be bullied by that. Puny God. Avengers Age of Ultron, 2015. The Marvel Cinematic Universe built on its momentum from the first Avengers movie and brought its band of superheroes together again three years later in the Age of Ultron. Even though the movie did well in the box office, earning north of $1.4 billion, it is still considered to be the weakest of all Avengers movies. In it, Mark Ruffalo's portrayal of the Incredible Hulk is based on Peter David's Hulk comics, in which the Incredible Hulk and Bruce Banner were two different people. Moreover, The Incredible Hulk's voice was provided by Lou Frigno in this film. Since 1978, he played The Incredible Hulk in practically every live-action adaptation till 2015. Now that's incredible. <laughs> Thor Ragnarok 2017 Almost 30 years after the first ever Hulk movie introduced Hulk and Thor working together, we finally got to see the iconic pair return to fight off evil, albeit in a completely different era, played by completely different actors. In Taika Waititi's wildly entertaining ride, Mark Ruffalo replaced Lou Ferrigno to voice the Incredible Hulk for the first time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. While this film adapts the Planet Hulk plot, director Waititi claims that Hulk was not originally planned to appear in the film, but oh, are we glad they decided to bring the Hulk on board for this. Avengers Infinity War 2018 The Incredible Hulk's third appearance as an Avenger came in Infinity War, which was set to bring Marvel's fourth phase to a conclusion in two parts. The movie was a commercial blockbuster, breaking every single box office record that came its way. And part of that was the amazing performance of Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk and Dr. Bruce Banner, who had a combined screen time of over eight and a half minutes in the movie. Funnily enough, due to his history of accidentally spoiling previous Marvel films, Mark Ruffalo was handed a false script. In an interview, he joked that the false script was better than the actual one. Avengers Endgame, 2019. We saw the last of the Incredible Hulk in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the final and biggest movie in franchise history, Endgame. For the first time ever, the movie saw the introduction of Smart Hulk, which finally saw a compromise between Dr. Banner and his alter ego, the Hulk, as they lived harmoniously in a single physical form. During his interview, Mark Ruffalo said that the merging of Bruce Banner and Hulk, whom he plays in the film, was something that had been in the works for a long time before it happened in Endgame. What do you think? Maximum occupancy has been reached. Take the steps. Yes. Yeah. Stop, stop. Take the stairs. Take the stairs. 